Welcome back to our third talk in the Keeping in Balance series. This talk comes between a lesson on the importance of rest and a lesson on the importance of service. I want to lean into the topic of rest a little bit more though because there's a big difference between studying about what God says about rest for a week or so and actually doing it. My prayer is that giving this subject a little more attention will increase the likelihood that we will actually do it. I'm really hopeful too that you'll journal or discuss your answers to the questions found at the end of the outline for this talk. You can find this in Lesson 10 of your study guide. Thoughtful journaling, discussing things with others, and repeating what we're learning all help us to actually apply what we're studying to our everyday lives. And that's what it's all about, being transformed. So let's dive back into the topic of rest. In his book, A Hidden Wholeness, Parker Palmer tells a story about farmers in the Midwest who would prepare for blizzards by tying a rope to the back door of their house out to the barn as a guide so that they could be sure that they could get back home again. With a blizzard swirling, visibility was non-existent. And without a rope to guide you, it was possible to never find your door, even if you were only feet from it. Many of us have lost our way in the whiteout of the blizzard swirling around us. Blizzards begin when we say yes to too many things. We multitask so much that we don't even notice that we are doing three things at once. We admire people who are able to do so much in so little time. They are our role models. But do you think it is possible that with our efficient, super busy lifestyles, we could actually become counterproductive? We are told that in the U.S. we have the best standard of living, yet I wonder if we are often too tired to enjoy it. How many of us charge through our week, going from one activity to another, ending each day exhausted? The weekend comes, and instead of having a rest, we simply switch gears for a different set of activities. We need a rope to lead us home. I feel that God offers us a rope to come home through the Sabbath. What does the word Sabbath mean? It means to cease, to stop working. It refers to doing nothing related to work for a 24-hour period, and during that time we are to switch our focus from our schedules and put it on God. We are to reflect His image to the world by doing what He did after creation, stopping our work and resting. I realize that to do this is completely radical. It goes against our culture, which views Sunday as the day to get ready for the next week, to shop, do laundry, catch up. I believe that the only way that we will actually do this is if we view it, as a commandment and as an incredible invitation, an invitation from God, because that is exactly what it is. In the book of Exodus, we read that the Jewish people called the Israelites had lived as slaves in Egypt for 400 years. They never had a day off. They were treated as machines, valued for what they produced. They were treated as production tools to make pyramids. Imagine how much overwork must have been ingrained into them they had never experienced the rhythm of work and rest. They had never had permission or a choice to rest. Living meant performing tasks, with one day blurring into the next. When God led the Israelites out of slavery into the Promised Land, He began the task of molding this group of slaves into His chosen people, meant to reflect who He was to the surrounding nations. He brought them into freedom, but God knew that true freedom was more than just a matter of no longer being under Pharaoh's thumb. The Israelites were going to have to learn a whole new way of living. God gave the Israelites the Ten Commandments to teach them how to live as free people, as His beloved children. The longest and most specific of the Ten Commandments is the fourth. Let's take a look at them all in comparison. If you have your Bible, open it up with me to Exodus 20, 1 through 17. You shall have no other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And then the fourth, remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or daughter, or your male or female slave, or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested. This is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. 
then honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. God worked. We are to work. God rested. We are to rest. After creating the heavens and the earth, God rested. It was the climax of God's week, and it is to be the climax of ours. Before the Israelites entered the Promised Land, Moses told them that the very act of ceasing from their work was a way in which they showed the surrounding nations that God had liberated them. By the very act of refusing to succumb to the enormous pressure of the Western culture around us, we too show that there is a different way to live, that we are a free people. We live in a world in which people are valued for what they do and what they produce. When we stop and choose to rest, we show that we know we are deeply loved by God, not for what we produce, but for who we are. When we say no to activities, we bear witness to the fact that there is someone who is more important than our schedules, God. The Sabbath requires that we build into our schedules the doing of nothing each week. Nothing measurable is accomplished. By the world's standards, it is an unproductive, useless day. But by God's standards, it is far from unproductive if we choose to use the time as He desires. This is a day when we cease our strivings and simply spend time in God's presence. When we keep the Sabbath, we affirm that God is the source and the center of our lives. I think it's important that we not be legalistic about the Sabbath, because what about nurses, policemen, priests, pastors, anyone who has to work on Sunday? It's important to note that what your Sabbath looks like will be very different from what mine looks like. It isn't critical what day of the week it is, the point is to have a day set aside for rest and replenishment and focus on God. The key is setting a day aside and keeping that rhythm. There are four qualities that are important to find in a Sabbath that make it different from just having a day off. We need to prepare, then stop, rest, delight, and contemplate. So let's look at them one by one. First of all, we need to prepare, then stop. This requires inner preparation and practical preparation. The Sabbath is first and foremost a day of stopping. The word stop is built into the literal meaning of the word Sabbath. Yet most of us feel that we can't stop until we finish what we're doing. We need to finish our cleaning, answering our emails, doing the laundry, balancing the checkbook, returning all phone messages. There's always one more goal to be reached before stopping. But on the Sabbath, I embrace my limits. God is God. He is indispensable. I am not. The world continues just fine when I stop. I find this incredibly difficult to do. I like the feeling of having all loose ends tied up. I feel that if I don't finish what is on my plate, I'll never catch up. I've realized, though, that I'm fooling myself if I think I will ever be capable of being all caught up. There will always be something more than I can do. If I wait until I get my life under control to start obeying the fourth of the Ten Commandments, it will never happen. When I embrace my limits, acknowledging that I didn't get everything done on my to-do list, yet I'm still going to obey God and rest, I grow in the area of humility. I'm admitting to God that I am not perfect, that I'm a work in progress, that I cannot do it all, and that I trust Him. It shows that I trust that He is the one in control of my life, not me. It is a time when I'm reminded that even when I stop, the world keeps on going. One day I will die, and the world will keep on going, even though there will be things that I have left unfinished. The core spiritual issue involved in stopping is trust. Do I trust God to take care of me if I obey Him by keeping the Sabbath? When I first studied about the Sabbath, it seemed impossible to me to be able to take a whole day off, to stop. It seemed to me that I'd spend the rest of the week regretting that I hadn't continued working. It was a classic case of being asked to obey God, but figuring that obedience wouldn't really bring blessing, it would make things worse. Then I thought about the fact that over and over again in Scripture, we are reminded that obedience to God always brings blessing, even when it appears that it'll make life more difficult but it requires practical preparation. The first time I attempted to keep the Sabbath, I woke up on Sunday morning, 
I brought Leo a cup of tea in bed, bonus points, and then I sat down to have my prayer time. But within minutes, I was feeling irritated. There were clothes all over the floor in the laundry area, clutter was all over the place from Saturday's fun, meals needed to be made, and the kids didn't have clean clothes that were dressy enough for masks or clean uniforms for Monday. So I spent the day making meals and doing laundry, and I was mad. I was mad because I thought I was going to get a rest since I decided that I wasn't going to work. I was, missing a very important, I was missing a very important point that the Jewish people figured out centuries ago. The Jewish people have traditionally celebrated not just the Sabbath, but also a day of Sabbath preparation. The day before the Sabbath, they work ahead to ensure that the following day goes smoothly. I realized that this would be essential for me as well. The following week, I announced that Saturday was my day to get ready for the Sabbath. As soon as I got a pocket of time, I did the laundry I needed for Mass and school on Monday. I made sure those clothes were hanging in a separate place so they'd be ready to go when the time came. I made sure that we had belts and the right shoes since one shoe always seems to be missing when we need to head out the door. I decided that it didn't matter if all the other laundry stayed undone for another day. I could pick up with that task again on Monday. And I next focused on food. I figured out what we needed for the meals on Sunday, choosing meals that were simple enough that I could make the food ahead. I made the meals and I set the table for Sunday morning. I imagined it was Sunday night and I got everything ready for Monday morning. I knew that I could ignore undone laundry, but I'm not a person that can easily ignore clutter. In order to not feel crabby all day Sunday because of the mess, a number of times on Saturday we did 20 item pickup. And this is where each of the children pick up 20 items and put them in their correct places. The next day was truly a day of rest. It surprised me that on Monday morning, even though I had not worked on Sunday, my house was in better shape than usual. But isn't that how it works with God? Through obedience comes blessing. And I felt refreshed. So when you stop, what do you replace all your normal activities with? You replace it with refreshment. You replace it with rest, with whatever replenishes you. Do you enjoy reading, walking, scrapbooking, going to a movie, taking a nap, connecting with friends, going for a run, listening to music, playing music, sitting in silence? What delights you? What brings you joy? What causes you to lose track of time? The Sabbath is the day to do those things. In his book, The Rhythm of Life, Matthew Kelly recommends doing at least one activity in each of the four areas of legitimate need, physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual on the seventh day. Researcher and storyteller Brene Brown has written about the important role of play in our lives. And she wrote the following in a blog post titled, Why Goofing Off is Really Good for You. She wrote, a few years ago, I noticed in my research that wholehearted people my term for men and women with the courage to be vulnerable and live their lives all in, shared something else too. They goofed off. They spent time doing things that seemed to me frivolous, like gardening and reading. I couldn't wrap my head around it. Were they slackers? Then one day when I watched my kids jump on the trampoline in our backyard, it hit me. Wholehearted adults play. Researcher Stuart Brown, MD, describes play as time spent without purpose. To me, this sounds like the definition of an anxiety attack. I feel behind if I'm not using every last moment to be productive, whether that means working, cleaning the house, or taking my son to baseball practice. But I can't ignore what the research, mine and others, tells us. Play, doing things just because they're fun and not because they'll help me achieve a goal, is vital to human development. Brown believes that play is at the core of creativity and innovation. Play can mean snorkeling, scrapbooking, or solving crossword puzzles. It's anything that makes us lose track of time and self-consciousness, creating the clearing where ideas are born. Which means it's a mistake to restrict play to vacations. This year, I hope you'll join me in resolving not to base your self-worth only on your productivity. It's playtime. The Sabbath is a perfect day for play. After you identify what refreshes you, take some time to think about what drains you. When you identify those things, take a break from them on the Sabbath. Suggestions of things to rest from. Work, physical exhaustion, hurriedness, competitiveness, multitasking, worry, catching up on errands, decision-making, 
technology, and screens. The next important quality of the Sabbath is delight. After God created the world, he rested on the seventh day. He also delighted in all that he had made, saying that it was very good. As we imitate God, we are to delight in what we have been given. The Sabbath is a perfect day to count our blessings and delight in them. God has given us a beautiful world. Look around and find examples of beauty in creation and delight in them. Delight in the little things. As you take a hot shower, enjoy how good it feels that the water is warm and you feel fresh. Thank God for the coziness of a fire in the fireplace or the comfort of a blanket as you nap. Instead of noticing the faults in the people around you, delight in them. Slow down and really look at them. Look at them through God's eyes. Think of your friends' unique gifts and what you enjoy most about them. Think of your parents' strengths, trying to see life through their perspective. If you have children, notice the way that God created each of them, choosing what their eyes would look like, what their laugh would sound like, the softness of their skin. Instead of being frustrated that they won't leave you alone, delight in the fact that your children love you and want to be with you. A day will come when we'll long to have their hands in ours. Delight in all the people God places in your path. Look at people, really look at them, trying to imagine who they really are. What might their dreams be, their hopes, their hurts? The final quality of the Sabbath that I want to discuss is the importance of contemplating. The most important component of the Sabbath is turning our focus towards God, thinking about Him, contemplating Him. Celebrating the Sabbath on Sunday makes sense as we have the opportunity to go to Mass. And in order to most enjoy our time with Him, we should prepare spiritually for Sunday. How? It's no coincidence that most parishes offer the Sacrament of Confession on Saturday. And that's a great way to prepare for a time with God at Mass. Take time to pray before Mass, asking God to speak to your heart in a special way as you receive Him in the Eucharist. Take a walk and thank God for His beautiful creation. Try to keep an ongoing dialogue with God during the day. If you have children, take time to pray with them and read Bible stories at bedtime. Choose to spend your Sabbath day not just relaxing, but contemplating the fact that God is always beside you, enjoying the day and your presence. The Sabbath is like a snow day. It's like a day when the shops are closed, school is off, and the roads are too bad to drive on. It's a free day, one with no obligations. You can do what you enjoy, read a book, Take a nap, call an old friend, play a game with your kids. You have permission to play. Few of us would give ourselves a no obligation day very often, but God gives us one every seventh day. Think about it. He gives us 52 snow days a year. And if we start practicing the celebration of the Sabbath, I believe the refreshment we receive will spill over and bring delight into our other days as well. Will you pray with me, please? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, I just pray that we would increasingly see ourselves as your beloved children, not your workhorses. You want us to rest, so much so that you made it one of the Ten Commandments. I pray that we would really take that seriously, not just hearing these truths and going, oh, well, you know, maybe when I'm super tired, I'll give that a try. Help us to truly believe that through obedience comes blessing. But help us to see the importance of preparation, of planning ahead, of setting our expectations. May we do those things, and then may we be surprised by delight, by all the joy and the fun that can come in a day of rest. Help us to remember that our value does not lie in our productivity, and that when we stop, we are acknowledging that it isn't all about us. It's all up to you, in fact, and you are more than capable of handling and holding all those things which we might feel must be done immediately. May we grow in trust of you, and may we learn to rest. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.